Hey guys, just want to make a video tonight kind of walking you through one of my hunting galleries of photos. Um, sometimes it's a little bit tough to understand how much you should or shouldn't be shooting, like what are other dudes doing, how do dudes cover hunts and document them, um, and you'll end up figuring it out on your own. I thought it might be valuable to go through one just to see some of it, talk about some of the photos I shot and why. So we're going to go ahead and do that right now. Um, if you guys haven't, you should check out the video that I made. It was like a spring bear sizzle for Stone Glacier. And um, we'll actually play just a very short clip here right now. And then we'll dive straight into the gallery right afterwards. All right, so here's the gallery. Um, here's some duffel bag shots. Nothing with too much heat here, pretty basic shots. Uh, the guys were gearing up their backpacks, so I just slapped some gear uh, in a duffel there that wasn't quite full and snapped a few photos. Again, just kind of covering my bases, shooting a few different looks here. Um, and this is before we hiked in. Sorry, my internet's probably not the fastest. Uh, there were a couple in there that, you know, were like close to maybe being good. Totally usable for like product imagery. So you can see here, I'm just shooting some beanie shots. It seemed like some of the photos that I was shooting that day were just for product specific stuff. So I work at Stone Glacier and so I kind of know where we have some holes and either product pages on websites or whatnot. So I have a little behind the scenes knowledge that helps me out, but you know, Pretty basic stuff, covering my bases. Again, I was shooting a bunch of video stuff, but you guys should go watch this thing before you go through uh, this gallery with me because it'll give you a little context for kind of what I was doing up there. I was basically shooting this spring sizzle. I was shooting a Sky uh, Archer 6400, basically this backpack I needed video clips for, and then our M5 series of rain gear. So this is kind of the first real morning of hunting, hiking up in, just trying to show the landscape a little bit. Decent photo, I mean, nothing insane. Um, just a well executed shot. One thing that kind of struck me, let's see, kind of switched it up, a little tighter look. So I mean, obviously a lot different photo here. Second one, in my opinion, is way better. Um, just really, Focusing in, compressing space with a longer lens to just show how many dead burn trees there were in this area. Um, once we sat down in glass, obviously it helped for a bit, but my job there is to get all these shots and, and document the hunt. So the one good thing that I did, although none of these shots are too crazy, is I move around the subjects. So in front of them there, straight behind them like i'm giving context to kind of what these guys are doing uh both of those are wider shots <clears throat> this one's a little more like mid-range just again highlighting some of the landscape that these guys are sitting in glassing for bears in front of them just really covering my bases head head down shot this was a, a shot i was shooting for the m5 rain gear it's you know not raining that hard no dramatic lighting or backdrop so it's like it's just you know, photo, but um, making sure that I covered my base is like that. I like this photo a lot better. There's no weapon in this one. There's no spotting scope. This photo, while definitely 
gives us some context for the hunt. You can see the trekking poles back here. See the water beating up on him. As far as those two photos, this one's quite a bit better, in my opinion. Um, you know, trying to play off the fact that they're both glassing, one guy in focus, one not. Mixing it up, you know, shooting a horizontal, shooting a vertical. Obviously, there were other photos that I shot. This is just the edited gallery, so there's some that, you know, were just whatever, not included. Um, so one thing I had to do when I was out there filming is, is just shoot photos at very strategic moments. So basically from spotting the bear to shooting at the bear, there's about, I don't know, eight photos. Um, you can't shoot everything every way all the time, so you kind of have to pick and choose. I just tried to find a couple moments where there was like a little extra struggle uh, or a unique landscape. Those are all just so-so. This one was decent. It just shows how steep this hill is. The guys are climbing up to try to get a, a shooting rest on this steep hill. You know, again, all fine photos. Uh, not bad. There's really nothing that you can point a finger at, in my opinion. Like their in-focus exposure is good. Uh, here he is climbing up, gives you some depth. You can see, you know, back down the bottom of the valley there. And this was a point that kind of, you know, you got to be in a shape as good of the, in as good of shape as the guys you're documenting. Here I'm staying back and I'm shooting up the hill. This next photo is probably another 250 yards up the hill. Uh, we had literally just come up around this rock and I basically hauled ass up in front of him which in these conditions i'm sure i was huffing and puffing but you have to be able to be in good enough shape that when these guys get tired you jump out in front of them um you can also direct them but either way you got to get in front of them again which is basically meaning you need to hustle so being in good shape helps you definitely get more photos again this one just kind of showing the climb up uh guys set up set up here's a shot kind of showing a little bit of like the texture of the landscape could be used for like weird backgrounds and product catalogs here we are filmed most of the kill shot and, and lyle shooting that bear we shot from somewhere over here and then bombed down again i just was trying to kind of see shots in my head before uh i took them and i knew a shot looking back down the valley was going to be pretty sweet Fortunately, it was. There's a couple different body positions. Body position when they're hiking is something to look for. You know, hiking photos, a lot of times you're going to shoot a burst and just try to pick those body positions that, you know, hopefully look athletic and natural, showing preferably some of the movement that that person's doing. Um, didn't shoot a ton of the bear. Bears are, are definitely tough photo subjects. Um, again, coming down, just looking at the topography, seeing what was going to be most interesting. The fact that we killed this bear, I think it was right here, you know, beneath these huge, massive cliffs was pretty cool. And so I wanted to play that up, shot back up towards him. The natural rain on, on my lens, cause it was raining the whole time. Um, I think definitely adds to that photo. Some of these photos, like this is a prime example of a photo that if you don't look at it, look at it on, a, on a large screen and really get to see the depth of it, like it doesn't work great for a social post uh, or smaller screen space where you're going to be getting people's attention. And then I'm shooting a vertical, a couple verticals, a little closer. You can see the gear a little better. Not an amazing photo. Pretty straightforward. Now I'm shooting downhill. Again, horizontal and verticals. Just again, covering my bases, showing it in a few different ways. Hopefully it would allow your client, or in this case, Lyle, which is the marketing manager at SG, does most of the advertising stuff where we use product photography, catalogs, print ads and such. And so I'm shooting with the hope that I'm giving him a lot of options. And that, my friends, 
That, my friends, is the cinnamon roll timer. So we're gonna give this just up, just a pause. A pause. Ooh. All right, it's like one, one more minute. You know how that goes. <laughs> um, so yeah, now we're getting down to the bottom, caught up to the guys, shooting a little bit of stuff for kind of M5 slash bino harness here. Hiking out, again, trying to see where we have some unique kind of landscape here and taking advantage of it with the camera. Again, horizontal and verticals. You know, bad weather is a real pain in the butt to shoot in, but man, it really elevates the imagery without you doing anything. It just, it makes your photos better. Fortunately, the lighting was pretty sensational on the hike out, made my job easy. So um, I just, for the most part, had to point and shoot, but just trying to find moments where I can show both of the guys doing something uh, be able to see the backpacks and the rain gear work in was key. Uh, like this one, you can see the rain a little bit. I saw there was this log, you know, overhead across the trail, just a cool part of the trail where you want to be running your camera. Really like that one. Just, it shows the rain, uh, it shows the rain gear working well, but the framing was a little funky. It's kind of in the middle awkwardly, I feel like. Um, this one's pretty good. I feel like where the two guys, guys' body positions are is like not as interesting as it could have been if I would have moved my camera a little bit. Um, a lot of that's just sometimes it doesn't work out and the shot doesn't come together. Sometimes it does and this one's kind of a met me in the middle a little bit. I like this one. I mean, it's it's like a moment where we're all just chilling. Um, obviously, it's been a long day. The guys are worn out. Lyle's getting a drink. Um, and yeah, I think it kind of just captures a little bit of like, damn, that was a long day, boys. Here's Andrew crossing the creek or trying to cross the creek. <laughs> we found the route below him. Came across this log making sure to get both shots from behind and in front. I like this one a lot, just cause you can tell that he just came over this log. The backpack looks kind of gnarly. That blood's been getting washed down the back of it and just everything looks like it's been used and just beat to hell today. So uh, other than the dang hunter's orange vest, let me pull these cinnamon rolls out boys. close oh. oh that was close almost burned them they're on the golden side of things all right we're almost done here uh, again shooting a real like kind of extreme close-up just showing Lyle shoulder in his pack which ended up I think it's a pretty strong image Product detail um, can definitely be a good thing that gets overlooked. It's not always the most exciting thing. Uh, it's actually pretty usable from a brand standpoint. I didn't shoot a lot of it. As you can see, this is really the only shot in there, but if if you're in unique situations or, or you know, if there's precipitation or dirt or mud or dust, some of the product detail stuff can be like a really cool photo and a valuable photo for the product itself. Um, I don't know how valuable this one would be. We probably would put this on like a web product page or anything, but it might be like a cool additional element in some other advertising fashion. Kind of shot it a few different ways. Just kind of captures the grid of it all. Again, moments where there's, you know, some extra physical exertion, a little extra challenge. A couple fill in landscape photos here, right by the uh, vehicle. 
shooting the M5 gear, just hanging out, drying out. I actually had to go on a hunt with Andrew. He had a tag, so we were going straight into the next hunt that evening. Um, tried to do like a product, kind of weird layout and out in the environment. I don't think I killed it. I think you could make this really cool. Uh, I think it was a good idea. I just don't think I executed executed it well and like the, the backdrop wasn't that entertaining or exciting. I think this, you know, these were a lot better versus that better. Just getting some of that kind of lifestyle after the hunt stuff while I was making Coffee, Andrew's chowing, filling his face. I think I told him, like, take the biggest bite you can. Uh, and then, yeah, we're straight into our next hunt. Shooting tent stuff. Um, but, yeah, this is kind of the end of that one single day of shooting that went along with this one and a half minute video that I shot, as well as getting some other video clips for products, um, for some longer product videos I was making. So hopefully that just kind of was informative of, of how much you could shoot uh, on a single day. Um, it's basically this whole day in the burn was that one single day. And um, hopefully some of the insights on a few of the photos was valuable. Probably won't find the time to do a ton of these, but we'll try to do some more um, and just try to continue to guys, give you guys some insight and try to help you guys become better hunting photographers. So. If you haven't, check out our website, our online course and mentorship, thehuntingphotographer.com.